Hey friends, welcome to this week's episode. Today, what we're talking about is the scales. Now, I recently done an episode about the scales and I asked the question, is the scale really your friend? Now, a lot of women have this connotation. The scale is not your friend. Ditch the scale. It's the devil. It's the sad step. It's the enemy. And you're really prepared to throw away the scales. Now, I'm not going to go into the ins and outs of that podcast. Obviously, I will say if the scale does cause you anxiety, by all means, don't use the scale. But today, I'm talking about how often should you step on the scales? Some say every day, some say every week, some say twice a month. Now I'm going to tell you how you know how many times you should step on the scales and the benefits of doing it and the benefits of not doing it. This is a practical episode, friends. I'm not going to tell you to go and dig out your scales and stand on it, but it is a practical episode where you can learn something hey from. Hey friends, what... welcome to VA Nutrition Coaching, the podcast. You are tuned in for another weekly episode and I am your host, Verona and I'm so glad you're here. I'm here to give you mindset focus, nutrition, weight loss advice that you can keep off for the long term. It's not about restrictive diets here. It's not about cutting out carbohydrates. It's definitely not about cutting out your favorite foods in order to lose weight that quite frankly, as soon as we've lost it, we end up regaining it and a little bit more. No friends, I'm here to give you real talk, no nonsense weight loss that you can actually achieve realistically and keep it off. I'm a faith-based woman also keeping it real when it comes to weight loss and keeping it real when it comes to nutrition, helping you do things things you can actually sustain for a long term. Now friends, let's get into today's episode. Picture this, you're trying to do everything good, you're being good, you've lost weight over the weekend, you've stood on the scale, you've seen there's a decrease and you are loving it. So much so that you say that you've been working hard, you deserve a treat and that's exactly what you do. But instead of one treat, it spirals out of control and you just have a whole cheap weekend and you feel guilty when you stand on the scale on Monday and the scales look like you've put on 10 pounds of fat. Let's talk about how many times should you stand on the scale? How often? should you do it now there are times where it's applicable for you you can actually do it every single day you are somebody who doesn't get affected by that scale but what if you are somebody who's affected and you're just trying to find balance in terms of tracking your progress when it comes to losing weight because when it comes to losing weight that's what we want we want to see how well we're doing and sometimes we can go to the scale for that level of affirmation but here's one thing to remember the scale is never going to affirm you it's an innate object like I talk about in the podcast is the scale really your friend now it's an innate object now if we're if we are placing emotional value on an innate object we are gonna come back disappointed every single time we need to learn to affirm ourselves we need to learn to encourage ourselves there's a christian gospel song that i love and i can't remember the artist but it's a big choir and one of the lines in the song says sometimes you have to encourage yourself. Now, it doesn't sound like that. It sounds a lot better than I'm saying it. But it says sometimes you have to encourage yourself. And it then goes on to say you have to speak victory during during the test. And no matter what you feel, encourage yourself, speak over yourself, encourage yourself in the Lord. That's the verse. I think it might be a chorus, but that's the verse in the chorus of the song. And that's literally what we need to do. If we're constantly looking, looking, looking for validation from scales, from innate objects, from other people that don't know us, it's great. We all want affirmation. We all want to know that we're doing a good job. You tell yourself you're doing a good job. If in the past you've always fallen off on day five, but you are now on day six and a half, you tell yourself, girl, get it. I'm halfway through to getting a new record, to being consistent for seven days. These are the things that you need to get into your mind and then begin to speak over yourself. Because when you start to encourage yourself, you feel encouraged and then you you begin to stand better. You begin to see yourself as like, yeah, I can do this. So when you're starting to do those things, you don't have to look for a scale now to affirm you. It cannot affirm you. Now, if you're a woman filled with Christian faith, we know that our affirmation and our acceptance comes through Christ. God tells us who we are, who he's created us to be in the beginning, literally in the beginning, Genesis, where he says, let us make man in our image. That's literally, there is no better image for us to be created into. And so when we get knocked left, right, and the enemy comes in and the enemy comes, tries to tell us, you know what, you're never going to lose weight because just because we're women of Christian faith, it doesn't mean that we don't get attacks too. We all get attacks even in the areas of weight loss. And sometimes we feel depleted, we feel discouraged. And that's when we have to encourage ourselves. So when you're encouraging yourself, knowing that you cannot get your affirmation from an innate object, and that starts with you speaking life over yourself. That's why my, that, that's why my coaching is founded on the Bible scripture be transformed by changing the way that you think. 
So now I've said that little pep talk, let's keep in that vein. So when I'm talking about the scales now and you are you know that you've been consistent, let's talk in the same vein where I talked about you've been consistent and your pattern has been, you always fall off on day five. You're now on day six and a half, then seven comes, eight comes, nine, then 14 days. You have been consistent in showing up. You know, the one thing that comes to crash your confidence in an instant is you stand on the scale and it says you've gained weight. You're like, what on earth? Why am I doing this? What's going on? Now you want to throw away the towel. Now you want to throw in the towel. And now you want to throw away the scales. This is where people then start to say the scale is a sad step. Is this, is that, is that. No, it's just a piece of, in, it's, it's just a material that you stand on. And it gives you data about your body that might not be as accurate as we expect. But it gives us data about our body nonetheless. And sometimes that can be very hard to swallow. That can be a very hard pill to swallow. That can be a point where we don't want to hear what's being told. We don't want to see what's being said. And so we then try to be like, you know what? I don't want to hear this. So we're trying to throw it out the window. Throwing it out the window kind of makes it less real. But there are some things that you can do to actually assess, is this scale telling me the truth right now? You see all those cheap weekends that I've had for the last 10 weeks? <laughs> Have they now caught up with me? <laughs> you see where I'm constantly depriving myself from sleep every single week and my stress and my cortisol levels are out of whack and they're out of sync. <clears throat> is this caught up with me? And so when you're asking yourself logical questions like this and you're then able to dissect it and actually go through it, like if you're somebody who is struggling with your metabolism, then you would probably do well with the Metabolism Reboot Program, which is a program that focuses specifically on rebooting your metabolism not repairing it, not stitching it or sewing it up together or sticking it together with glue like it's broken because it isn't broken. You just need to refocus key things when to repair and to rebuild your metabolism so that you can come away from that plateau and come away from that step where you're constantly chronically chronically dieting, under eating and restricting yourself from food. So when you find that you stand on the scales and you're like, what do I do? Should I continue to stand on the scale every single day to see if it goes down? And you continue to do that. And now 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, day 20. Now you're still being consistent. Remember, day 20, the scale is going up and up and up every single day. And that can be discouraging. It can be demotivating and it can definitely be like, what is the point of me doing this? But I want to tell you, this is where you start to get your game plan on point. This is where you start. If you're somebody who wants to keep this fat off, this is not where you give up. This is where you buckle up and you start to make yourself a plan. Now, if you need help, book a session with me, vanutritioncoaching.co.uk forward slash nutrition dash nutrition dash session. And then we'll plan your roadmap for nutrition from there. If you want to do the metabolism reboot, then the link is in the show notes for you to do that. There are different ways that you can do it. But if you're somebody who is actually can do the DIY plan yourself, then this isn't the time for you to give up. You need to now get yourself a different game plan. If you've tried it consistently for a period of time and it's not working, re-strategize, rethink what's going on, rethink your plan and put it back into action. Because weight will fluctuate every single day. Your weight actually fluctuates between five to six pounds daily. That's just normal. And especially if you've got, you know, you haven't quite, if you're constipated and you're you're not eating those, you know, nutrients, you ain't getting those darky leaf, dark leafy greens in your system. So your gut is loving all of those things. You're going to be a little bit backed up. Can I be honest? If you're eating a lot of fatty fried foods, it's going to back you up. Like you ain't going to, you know, if you've got a baby in the house and that you can see, (laughs) you can physically see when a baby's trying to go toilet. That's what we're like, but are are 10 times, (laughs) 10 times worse. And with all of that in your stomach, with nowhere to go, it can't go anywhere because you're not getting fiber and you're not getting water, you're not getting the nutrients that you need to push it out. Sorry for the description, but let's be real here. If you're packing that in, you're going to stand on the skin, it's going to be a little bit more heavier. So the question that um, everybody's on the mind, the scale can be hard. When it comes to the scales, it's hard. That's why I don't encourage you to use it as your only method to choose to help you progress because once that goes and you're like you know what this stupid devil how are you supposed to monitor now what's happening so let me talk about which way is right for you so daily weigh-ins you're the person who thrives on weighing yourself daily if you like that accountability if you like that structure if you like to know you don't care what it tells you you just want to know what the number says because you can then plan forward. You're the one who isn't shy to look at it. If you've gained weight, you've gained weight. If you gain fat, you've gained fat. And now you do put together a game plan and make sure that fat don't come back. You're the woman who's on it. You're the woman who's ready to do that. Then daily weigh-ins might be actually something for you because you like the accountability, because you like the structure and because it helps you monitor your progress and to keep on check with it on a day-to-day basis. And that's one of the things that we talk about in the coaching and the module is that how that you 
you navigate your progress if you are deciding to weigh yourself on a day-to-day basis. Because what you're starting to see now, you're starting to look logically, you're coming away from your emotions or you deal with your emotions and then now you start to get a game plan. Your game face is on and you start to look at those trends. What is something that you continually start to do? Any patterns, any habits, you start to look at those. You're not looking at them in the eye or the mindset that, you know what, oh my gosh, this is, I'm so stupid. I'm going to stay fat. I'm going to do this. We haven't got time for that because you're you're the type of woman who's, no, 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 no. Emotions ain't going to get me anywhere. Emotions is a place that got me here in the first place. I'm trying to come away from that. Now, I'm not saying don't do with your emotions. What I'm saying is appropriate them. And, and now you're going to work with the logis- logistical side of your brain and focus on a plan. Then these daily weigh-ins are going to be fantastic for you because you're using the scale as it is intended to be used as a, a data point. That is how you will know weigh-in daily is for you. However, daily weigh-ins isn't going to be right for you if you're the woman that I described earlier. That is like the scale is not your friend, especially when your start your weight is starting to fluctuate. No matter the reasons that I tell you, no matter the reasons why the scale fluctuates, you just seem to think that you are the problem. Because if it starts to affect how you see yourself, the scale isn't the problem. It's the way that you see yourself that needs to be dealt with. And so in the interim, You can reduce the amount of times that you step on the scale and daily would not be right for you because it would just trigger up too many emotions. It would affect your mood too much and that is more hassle than it's worth. But it's about knowing that you also have control over those feelings and being confident in that. Don't put yourself in a situation where it's going to cause you more stress and that's going to end up affecting your weight loss in the end of the day. But it's important for me to tell you the scale should never dictate your mood. It should never have the power to. And if it starts to have that, that's the thing you need to address and that's the thing that you need to work on and work through and reducing the amount of times that you stand on the scale or not using it altogether is a temporary or interim measurement that you can use. Now let's talk about occasionally doing it once in a while and so you're just kind of keeping on track of it oh what's my weight in what's my weight like you can go from just occasionally standing on the scale that's just making sure that you're aware of the weight that you're at it's not every day it's not a commitment it's just not like a relationship you're just every now and then you just check in to see that you know still alive the batteries still work and all of that and sometimes that could be when you go to a medical checkup it can be when you go to a doctor's checkup or sometimes it can be at home whenever you feel like standing on it. And there you can still keep an eye on the overall weight. You're not looking at the metrics, the finer details of things. You're just looking at, okay, right, I weigh 170 pounds, fantastic. That's it. And then you move on. And so there are other ways that you can do it. So daily, occasionally you do it every so often, every once in a while. And then you might fall into this category if you want to weigh yourself every single week. And when you're weighing yourself every single week, you are going to weigh the same time, the same day, you can wear yourself in the same outfit. It's not necessary, but you're wearing yourself in if the, if the same outfit isn't available, you're wearing yourself in similar. So you're kind of wearing the same thing, but you are not doing it every single day. So therefore you're releasing the amount of pressure that you put on yourself if you are not the woman who can handle being accountable to the scales and what it says on a day-to-day basis. And remember when you're using the, the scale, it's a tool. It's not the whole toolbox. It's just one tool and then remembering that not every tool is right for every handy handyman job or you know housework job that needs to be done you cannot nail a nail in the wall with a screwdriver I mean you can do it by force but it's not going to do it as correctly as the right tool and right equipment which is a hammer so this is the same thing it's not a one size fits all you have to find what works for you instead of constantly going up down up down with those emotions and being overly stressed out by the scales figure out what works for you if daily works for you you continue to stick with daily if once in a while seems to work for you better to do that you can have a hybrid model when it comes to weighing yourself when it comes to how often you stand on the scales when it comes to your nutrition it is personalized to you and the last option is is you might decide never to stand on the scale ever in your life. You might not choose to do so. You might choose to go by how your clothes fit, your energy, whether you've got brain fog, and you might choose to physically see how far you've come. If you're somebody who struggled to go up the stairs, by the time you got to the top stairs, you were out of breath to the point where you felt like your chest was about to cave in on you. Those are things that you can do to monitor your physical well-being, your, your physical ability to do things that you might have struggled to do before. And so if you're somebody who is standing on the scale too, or three times a day this is becoming obsessive this is obsessive behavior and that is not something that you need to do unless you've been advised to do so now again if you're weighing after you've eaten 
that's going to affect the number on your scale. And you might then start to think I put on fat, not necessarily. You're carrying more because you started to eat more and you've got clothes on. So that's why I have mentioned to start with the same thing that you can do. Now, these are all different ways that you can stand on the scale and it's literally about you it's about what fits for you and it's about what works for you just because somebody else is able to stand on the scale every single day if you're somebody who's affected by that mentally and emotionally and then you behave in a way that's replicating your thoughts then that's probably a clear indication that standing on the scale is not right for you it's about what I love to do and what I love to do on this podcast is empower you to make the right choices for you and your decision remembering that the scale is a tool it is to help you it is not the only tool in the, in the toolbox it's not the only way to measure your progress it definitely isn't accurate as we would like it to be if you want a more accurate result then i would recommend a dexa scan a dexa scan was introduced for bone density to see if you're at risk of osteoporosis or brain breakage but now they've opened it up to also measure the amount of visceral fat that you have internally so that's the fat that's wrapped around your vital organs that could then develop into other health complications or problems if this is the type of accountability that you want in your nutrition journey then you're the type of woman that I want to work with and I want to walk alongside with and be your coach if you're stuck to be accountable with anybody you have to be at a certain stage a certain mindset to be able to start your weight loss journey for life now you're not going to lose weight every single day you're not going to be forever be on a diet you are starting this lifestyle change so once you've lost the weight now you're transitioning into how you can maintain that and that can also include how often you're going to stand on the scales so when you're first starting out you might start out to weigh in every single day if you are the type of woman that can handle that then if you are then once you've done and learned those key skills that you need you then transition into weigh in every now and then it's all about you it's a journey it's a marathon but not a sprint you're not you're not trying to you know run and be the energizer bunny here you're not trying to do any of that you're just trying to make sure that you can maintain these results that is the biggest thing the biggest takeaway is it's all about what works for you and what you're comfortable with and what you know you can maintain for a lifestyle and that my friends is how you should know how often you should stand on the scales and whether or not scales is right for you right now and if it isn't right for you there's no shame it does not matter if it doesn't work for you you own that and that's where you're at I would encourage if you are struggling with the scales and it is causing you anxiety to work through that in a, in a safe space with a counselor with a therapist to really work through those anxieties and those anxious thoughts as to why you do have those feelings it, they may tell you in their therapy they may get you to stand on the scale they may get you to work through that I'm not your therapist so I'm not going to give you any therapeutic treatments here but they will give you those things as to why and do the right kind of therapies with you to be able to help you to recognize where those thoughts and where those actions come from and they will put together an action plan that you two can work with specifically to help you through that and of course if you want the more personalized and that's when we can work together you can book the nutrition session over on the website va nutrition coaching.co.uk forward slash nutrition session and that is it that is all that we've got time for in this week's episode i can't wait to catch you in the next one Hey friend, you made it to the end of the episode. What was your biggest takeaway from today's episode? Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast and leave a review over on iTunes. And if you have any questions, comments or concerns about today's episode or you need help, then you can contact me over on Instagram at VA Nutrition Coaching Podcast or email me support at VA Nutrition Coaching UK. Or you can head over to the Facebook page VA Nutrition Coaching Podcast. It helps us reach even more women who are fed up of dieting don't know how to lose weight they're frustrated with following sally's results and they're not getting any of their own and they just finally want to shed some pounds and do it in a way that they can sustain and they can enjoy but my friends that's a wrap for today's episode i can't wait to catch you on the next one until then friends stay healthy stay blessed and remember if you haven't already downloaded your five ingredient recipe pack you can go to the website va nutritioncoaching.co.uk forward slash recipes and download your five ingredient recipe pack who said healthy eating was boring See you next time, friends.